on a dark and stormy night. 4,000 fans crowd into the Power and Light District I'm born and raising with one thing on their minds. Oh, yeah. Music. They've come to see the most successful independent rap artist in the world. Who just happens to call Kansas City home. We've all seen or heard of Tech 9 but very few know who he really is. Tonight, the rapper opens up Strange Music Studios, his home and his life, to KNBC 9 Chronicle, sharing stories many diehard fans may not know. So let's start from the very beginning. Man, that's just what we used to do, man. We used to dry our clothes on the, on the clothesline. I was born in November 8th, day 1971st, y'all. Nine o'clock in the morning, a Christian girl in Kansas City gave birth, y'all. Rode my big wheel down here, these steps. I used to have a little big wheel. Known to many as the King, the Clown, or the G, he prefers the name Tech Nine. I was born in Wayne Minor, Projects. But he was born Aaron Yates, a kid raised in one of the toughest neighborhoods in Kansas City. Kansas City, Kansas City, Kansas City. 904 Michigan, this is where I lived. I slept sometimes in my grandmother's room right there. Slept sometime in my uncle's room right there. My grandmother had eight, boy, eight girls and four boys, and uh, most of them lived in here. And I was, and my mom, my mom had a place right up the street. I used to walk from here up there and stay with my mom as well. But I always loved coming down to my grandmother's house because all my cousins would be here. My uncle used to buy me boxing gloves, and he used to have me box the whole neighborhood of children. From a young age, Aaron was surrounded by chaos and violence. My mom had an abusive boyfriend and we ran all over Kansas City away from him so I was like a nomad. Yeah. She had an abusive boyfriend that was in love with her and he put her in the hospital and stuff like that so we even moved over to KCK for a while with my auntie because it was so um, turbulent. Were you scared? <laughs> of course. To hear them fighting in the Next room and, oof, it was crazy, it was crazy. But she was a survivor. Oh yes, she was. She fought for a long time. She fought. A lot of demons, 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 a lot of demons. Gangs and drugs eventually took over. Wake up and I see crime. All of us, we on its eat time. My homies love me yelling peace nine at the same time throwing peace signs. We heard people getting shot in our neighborhood and stuff like that. Some of my best friends got shot, some of them killed, you know, but that happens in the street. Music gave us hella hope, made it up out of the banging and selling dope. But we music, music was always there as a possible way out. I gotta fight all of the night with cops, crips, bloods with sore fists. I gotta fight all of the night with cops, crips, bloods with sore fists and them Nazis. I would break dance right there, put my linoleum right there by the step. I was spinning one time and I hit my head on that bottom step. Ooh. You know? <laughs> but it didn't bust or anything. It just it hurt pretty bad. Don't nobody want it. We hella hot at the moment. We're coming for all opponents to feel incredible, don't it? Walter Jefferson lived right here on this corner on Michigan. Up in his room is where he named me Tech Nine from the Guns and Ammo book. Look at them copping me, trying to get top of the boss with a lot of mediocrity. Stalking the properties, want to get off of my monopoly. Tell me who is the one they call Socrates. That's why I created Tech Nine to be the complete technique of rhyme. You know, I wanted Tech Nine to be the ultimate rapper that could do everything, that could do rock, that could do gospel, that could do gangster, that could do country if I had to, R&B, you know what I mean? Jim Morrison and the Doors inspired Tech as a little boy and into adulthood. Strange days have found us. This wouldn't be a thing without the Doors. Strange 
people are strange. The Doors are a huge inspiration for me. Jim Morrison and The Doors are a massive inspiration. Travis O'Gwynn is the co-founder of Strange Music. And that's when he told me about, um, he had a publishing company at the time, and it was called EGN Arts. And I'm like, EGN Arts? And I said, I said, explain that to me. And he goes, well, he goes, that's strange backwards. And he goes, the reason I didn't use Strange is because if I ever get to do my own record label, I want to call it Strange Music. Let's get it. Fred Reck, Robbie Krieger, Ray Manzarek, John Densmore, Tech Nine, and Mr. Jim Morrison. We got to do with the remaining members with Jim Morrison on the chorus. I'm just gonna come up with a melody that's within those the chords that you're doing already and the bass line, and it'll match. I got you. It'll match. Clever men, you're gonna be off of your rocker when the shock was on chopper. It's kind of funny having no money coming up. Yeah. Number one independent rapper, people running up. With a fact, I'm a summer that way, way back. I was running my dumb beast in the near sun. She's in a red time. I was in the booth doing my part where Jim would usually be with all them out there looking at me. I was so nervous because you can't amount to Jim, you know what I'm saying? But I was doing my rap, so and they enjoyed it. Ain't no dang face, never will my rain fade. Wanna come up and I want up on a minute. This is the trip. It was beautiful because it's not written in blood that you'll be able to work with the people that inspired you as a youngster. And I was able to do that. Milestone. I break down barriers because culture will say, that you're black, you listen to this. You're white, you listen to this. You're Latina, you listen to this. You're Asian, you listen to this, you know what I mean? It's like beautiful music should be beautiful music. And I work with people that I deem talented and do beautiful music. Fame and success didn't come easy. Tech was signed to multiple record deals, but major labels had no idea what to do with someone so eclectic. None of them panned out. I was different. Nobody knows what to do with Dr. Strange. So when I met Travis in 99, he was a fan of Dr. Strange. The very first shows that we did, I said, hey, you know, uh, I have a, a, an artist. I always say artist, not a rapper. I have an artist and, and uh, wanted to see if we could book your venue and, and, and do a show there. Who's your artist? Uh, well, his name is Tech Nine. And they're like, Gun Tech Nine? Oh, wait a minute. He's a rapper? I'm like, well, yeah, he's a hip hop artist. And then they're like, uh, we don't do that kind of music here. And I'm like, no, 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 listen. And then I get their ear and then they call me back. Yeah, I just got online. Is this the, the red-headed, spiked hair guy with face paint wearing a preacher's robe? And I'm like, yeah, that's him, you know? Uh, yeah, uh, yep, yeah, what'd you think? Nope. They made it into venues by making one promise. And if one thing goes wrong during this performance, you keep all the money. Everybody say yeah! We go, we do the show, everything would go perfectly. Tech and I personally would stay back, we'd shake the hands of every bartender, every security, the janitors, help clean up, all kinds of stuff. And then that would spread and that same club owner who hung up the phone on me at first, invited, well, when are you guys, when are you guys coming back through? And that turned into building the absolute best reputation in touring in the business, period. Not just independent music, not just rap, not hip hop, but period. Our, we're held in the highest regard. It's part of what's made Tech 9 the most successful independent rapper in the world. How could I be so down at a time like this when I'm high like this? The road is wild. If you don't know how to control it, you may lose control of the wheel. Losing control came quickly. Boom, we hit flip like five times, all the windows start breaking out in the van, and I'm like, oh God, oh God, while we flip it, and finally we stop. Tech Nine's road has brought him face to face with death more than once in more than one way. Everybody around me always think like no one's going on inside my mind. 
when KMBC 9 Chronicle continues. From a thought came a creation. A creation of something new. With love, positivity, and hope. From nothing, we grow the core. Let me invite you to my planet. Rapper Tech 9 has come a long way since his days as a little boy in Kansas City's Wayne Minor projects. But as his star grew in the music business, the threat of death wasn't far behind. Put your hands in the air like this. We can sing or we can bang, it ain't no game. We After multiple failed record deals, Tech 9 was finally bringing his brand of strange music to the masses. That you came with your train or listen, main thing in your lane. The spotlight brought success and opened up a world of darkness. Woo! A world that led tech to oh, drugs. Man. But I just wanted to escape from my reality. You know, I mean, my reality was I was trying to, you know, be a new artist, and nobody got the crazy, strange person. And it was, uh, it was discouraging. So that pill and that piece of paper, acid and shrooms and all that stuff put me in an altered state. You know what I mean? Like, I ain't gotta worry about nothing. I saw myself dying, so. I had to quit on my own. And my partner, Travis, you know, he got a whiff of it. Like, dude, I'm not gonna be involved with anybody that's gonna kill themselves with drugs. I'm like, never me. I got it, bro. Never me. He, you know, he'd see me like, dude, I can't do this. Yeah. It's bad, Tech. I'm like, damn. Nobody was supposed to see that outside of me. What you gotta do to get, what you gotta get, I gotta get it all, take a needle from the road. Couldn't watch somebody that I actually really care for uh, kill themselves. It allowed him to realize we were on our way to something really special and and uh, you're about to completely derail and disregard it. Uh, and, and, and he, you know what, he stopped and he stopped cold turkey and never looked back. I've been clean for Decades, <laughs> well, decade and some years. Overcoming addiction put Tech back on the road to success, but that road would threaten his life once again. We're in a 15 passenger van. On a snowy highway in Montana while heading to a show. Hit a patch of ice. All of a sudden, the van starts fishtailing. We went sliding further and further towards the embankment. Boom, we hit. The guys have had a, an accident, and I'm like, what do you mean, you know? And, and uh, 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 flipped the van five times. I'm like, oh, who's dead? <laughs> like, oh God, oh God, while we flipping it, finally we stop. Several strange music artists were in the van, including Chris Calico. We went over a bridge, slid sideways, the trailer pulled us over the side, we flipped over five times. I actually went out of the window, it ejected me out of the van, weirdly enough, and back into the van. Like, I went out, and, and I remember touching the ground, I touched the grass, because when we stopped, I had grass and mud all in my teeth. And I hit the ground and I remember just thinking like, God, my mother is gonna be so upset when she found out I died today. That's all I was thinking like, God, my mom was gonna lose her mind. All I could see is this gray tumbling and stuff flying, you know, like glass flying and stuff. And then I felt like, boom! I yanked the doors open, I'm yelling out, Tech, Tech, are you all right, man? Turned around, Tech was out like this with blood coming out of his mouth. And I turned around, I touched him, I said, Tech, Tech. And I was like, oh my God, he's, gay. he's dead. Gotta be dead, you know? And uh, Nick had to rip us, rip the door open. Nick was a huge human being, about 6'6", six, 6'7", six, six, 500 pounds. 
and he rips the doors open. That's when I got out, looked at Tech, he's bleeding it. And I was like, Tech, man, please get up, man. I start crying and he just goes, it's good to be in God's graces. And I'm like, you, and I cussed him out. And I grabbed him like, dude, don't play like that. And he was like, I was out. I just heard you screaming. I'm like, what is Chris crying about? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And he wakes up and then we all get out. I just drop to the ground, start thanking God in the snow, on the ground, and our van was crushed down like this. Everybody somehow just had minor cuts and minor bruises. Nobody broke a bone. Nobody had uh, life-threatening injuries, no internal injuries. Um, and I'm like, wow, uh, what's, you know, so super lucky. The uh, ambulance, the people that came, they said that we were all blessed, you know what I'm saying, to still be alive after flipping five times. Travis Collins was like, you guys still want to do the show? I was like, no. Tech's like, we can do this, man. You're not hurt. We're in a hot tub drinking wine. And I found a charter, and uh, it was a turboprop. So um, when we, yeah, I, I had to tell Chris this too. Chris is fearful of flying. And then we're already traumatized, and then we're getting in this little bitty plane where we had to duck to, climb, to crawl down the aisle. And I was like, I was staring at Tech the whole time, like, and he was just, he just kept pointing. He's like, man, God didn't let us live today to kill us today, this afternoon. He's like, we're cool, man, we're cool. And still did the show that same night. We showed up to Spokane and we um, played the show. We popped like champagne to celebrate on stage. Time with time just minus my We've never missed a show. Never. We've never missed a show. In 19 years, we've never missed a show. Mindless. In the middle of a time when the music's flying, I'm depleted my kind one of the biggest inspirations in Tech's music, his mother. She carried me when she was 15. Had me when she was 16. Reminiscing on how well she did things. Got what popped in 11871, she had this king. But like everything else, this inspiration would become an internal struggle for Tech that, face with her. that he carries to this day. Mom said, wait, then her and her sisters named me Aaron. Dante J.C. tried to give me everything I seen in KCP. No gas service was a means for grants to be too Like Nelly, Chingy, and Chang hang low. But Kansas City, somewhere over the rainbow. Welcome back to KMBC 9 Chronicles, Strange Music, and the house that Tech 9 built. They're celebrating 20 years in 2019. A music company built by two men, Tech 9 and Travis O'Gwen. But nothing would be possible without the high caliber of artists that have signed with the label. They've built a family and friendships that prove they can get through anything. No matter what way the fans receive music, we have strange music. We'll be right there in it. Although streaming services make it nearly impossible for artists to make some real bread, we will prevail and take over all facets of the music industry. Taking over is just what strange music is doing. Leading the charge, Kansas City rapper Tech 9 and the man almost always by his side. Strange music artist Chris Calico. Actually, people think we're a duo, but really, he's Tech 9. People think we are Tech 9, especially some people out of Kansas City. They think the two of us are Tech 9 because you don't really see him, you know, if you come to a show, you don't see him without me. There's always this, like this, this competition that um, makes us stay on top of our game, you know? And it's been like that since the beginning. And still today, I'm like, okay, I gotta one up this dude. Tech and Chris met in the late 1990s. I was thinking like, wow. Well, I want to put him on a song, so I paid Tech to be on a song. And he really liked what I did. He did song after song, and then uh, he invited me to do an album, a whole album. And that was in, I met him in 99, and uh, we started touring like the very end of 2000, beginning of 2001, and we've been doing it ever since. So we're like 20 years deep. Their bond is stronger than friendship, their family. 
brothers. I call him Mr. Big Voice because he's a smaller guy, but his voice is huge. And you would think he's an aggressive person by listening to him rap. Uh, but he actually is pretty soft-spoken a lot of times. How you doing back there? Very polite and um, more, more, more passive than aggressive. And I am the opposite. I don't remember what the slapback was like. I see what I want and I don't mind speaking up. And I don't mind speaking up on his behalf either. It's kind of got me into trouble back in the day. I gotta use the little boy's room. <laughs> <laughs> but I didn't mind yeah. because this was a man that was giving me an opportunity to do music for a living, so nobody was going to touch him. Ethan's and all. You know, so I've been very uh, protective of him. Opportunity today, thank you. Their paths were destined to cross long before they even knew each other's names. And then we pray. Amen. Amen. Our mothers knew each other. Hi, mommy, little cutation, darling. How are you? They didn't grow up together, but they've known each other since uh, their early, probably early 20s. And my mom has always been friends with Tech's family for years and years and years. I love you very much. Call me when you get home and have a, a blessed evening. They they're all were church folks. And so they fellowship together and they sing and stuff like that too. So. Uh, it's weird that they knew each other for years and I never knew Tech. His mom played the piano in the church, my mom sang was in the church choir, so that was our introduction to music. The influence of these two women shaped their sons into talented artists. The success they are having now is bittersweet for Tech. He lost his mother in 2014. She'd been fighting several medical issues for years. Epilepsy, grandma seizure since she was 18. Then later on in life um, was diabetes, then schizophrenia, then pancreatitis almost took her away in 2009. She fought that, and then uh, lupus finally did it, you know. But energy never dies, it transfers, it transferred to me, so. And I'm sure my siblings too, you know, they got a piece of it, you know what I mean? And uh, it's just way more happiness in this area. I felt it, so. And does that translate into your creativity? All the time, all the time, you know, you hear me screaming, for my mama on song, mama, you know. My mama, my mama, my mama is so tormented. She been through trauma, more drama. The dawn is gone. It's more tinted on the side. It gets out of it. Hot as a prophet who love God as his father slipping and get the bottom side of it. Her body gone, but her presence can be seen and felt in Tex music. Got me a big wheel, cause not for the green machine. But I loved it when I got it on my friend's swarm. And cause in the projects, big wheels wasn't the norm. And, and keeping watch in his Leewood home. An artist that we work with named Rob Pryor, he did it as a surprise for me oh. when I first moved in. And those letters, Lodge Fa, I have on my belly, mm -hmm. it's the last word she said to me, liberty and justice for all. She kept saying oh. it over and over and over. So I put it, um, yeah. those are her last words to me. Really? Liberty and justice for all. I said, is that all you want, mom? That's a tall order. You the question, God, what about my mama? The pain of losing his mother is obvious, and for Tech, many questions still remain. Question for the maker, and it's, oh yeah, this the way it's supposed to be, huh? All right. I've been looking all my life, and I've been looking for a reason because I wanted to be sure there was a spiritual realm. And if there is indeed a spiritual realm, then what I'm praying to for my sick mom is listening every night when I pray. Faith is what they taught us to have, so I still have faith. But um, I stopped looking for ghosts though. They'll find me if they exist. If ghosts exist, this is my clown shrine. They may be hiding in this room in Tech's house, a collection of clowns. I feel like I'm Michael Myers lyrically, murdering everything. I'm into anything clown, anything that has to do with a clown. I love it. That's just me. It's a long story. <laughs>
you know if I have, you know, red is my color and blue, I always thought blue was bad luck. For me to have that in here, it has to be special. Right. Some of the masks he's worn on stage and a lot of horror movie memorabilia. One of his most prized possessions, a poster of the movie Carrie that he saw with his mom when he was just five years old. I was born in 71. My mom took me to see this in 76. I bought this from somewhere. But the other one on the other side, Evil Dead, was one of my favorites. I noticed on my last tour that I came out as three different individuals, the King, the Clown, and the G. The G came out first. And the last song the G did on his set was um, All Yeah Intervention. And I screamed, Mama! You know, what about my mama? You know, to God, you know. When the clown comes out, I do um, Show Me a God, where I'm talking to God about my mom being sick. You know, so it's for my mama. And I didn't notice that I did that. The king comes out later on in the show, and he comes out and does Lacrimosa. You know what I'm saying? And talking about my mom being sick. So every characteristic that came out, not even planned it, it was all about mom. That whole show was about mom. So yeah, it translates through my music all the way. Welcome to Casa de Nina. Tex home is his safe haven, a place where he can rest, a place where he can create. But music is an Afro DJ, yeah, use it, what is Afro? I forgot how it goes. So I wrote it Saturday day, just two verses, two 16 bar verses. I wrote it Saturday day. I woke up early and I started getting ideas. I came out. <laughs> To exercise, walk into my room. Tech's life now looks a lot different from when he was growing up. Come on, show you my closet. Red, black, and white are my colors. And so you don't you don't wear any blue? Do you feel like it's bad luck? Yeah, yeah, I don't have any blue. I have some. I have something blue in there that Rose gave me. I like my shower. Eight people can fit in it. When I first moved here, I, I said, one, two, three. <laughs> Four, five, six. <laughs> Fragile went gold and Hood Go Crazy went gold and I got my first platinum one right here, Caribou Lou. I'm gonna put that up top. I just got that one so I just hit it over there. Tech's life now looks a lot different from when he was growing up. A little boy caught in the crossfire of violence, drugs and chaos to living in Leawood, Kansas, one of the most affluent cities in the country. Coming from nothing, you grow to appreciate life and love and the people that care. That's how you find Zen. But when you find Zen, you want to give it to everybody else. Until then, I'll just keep doing my job and create, create that light that I have within me, you know. And you can see it in your eyes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I always yeah. look for that. <laughs> uh -huh. I don't know what you see, but yeah. it's just the eyes are the window to the soul, so. You know, I'm, I'm bright. As for what the future may hold. Kansas City will be at the center of it all. And for all the technicians out there, a special message from Tech Nine, especially for you. Saturday morning, yes. I ain't gotta work. Last night's show sold a lot of merch. We don't rush anything, and we don't take any shortcuts at all. The strange music empire sprawls out across several thousand acres in Lee Summit. Every note is recorded in these studios. Born in the project, then to the veil. Then I did a deal with Travis and made meals. Every t-shirt is printed here. Every single one. 
all the printing is done in this building. So, you know, a, a long time ago, we started trying to figure out how can we control quality better and how can we get enough volume. If you're ready, step on up. So when you buy that CD or T-shirt at a strange music concert anywhere in the world, know it was created and made ready to sell right here at home. We do as much stuff here in Lee Summit as we possibly can, and we're always investing in new equipment that'll allow us to do more. We're really particular, like overly particular, because we want people to have a great experience so they'll come back and have another one. Okay, anything else? Tech Nine has written a love letter to Kansas City. My inspiration for many major ideas. North side, where is you? That's next when KNBC Nine Chronicle continues. East side, where is you? West side, what it do? Tech Nine, ain't nobody sauce like this. Star Rose, his fans, known as technicians, helped fuel his success. Everybody wanna photo with a star. In 2018, Tech Nine broke the record for having the most top 10 rap albums by any artist on the Billboard charts, and technicians weren't the only ones taking notice. Have you ever seen a Mainstream artists now wanted to collaborate and bring Tech's brand of strange music to people who had never heard anything like it before. Everybody but me, everybody but me, everybody but me. Finna go. Yep, Tupac. Tupac. Uh, yeah. Um, Jonathan Davis of the uh, of, of, of Corn. Um, Corey Taylor of Slipknot. Um, it just goes on forever. Feeling good like a villain should. Tech had finally triumphed over those failed record deals in LA. Strange music had made him a star. And soon Hollywood came calling once again. One by one as ordered, flank to flank and facing forward, hanging by the word. In chapter, verse, and sentence heard. Tech made his movie debut in the 2016 horror musical, Alleluia, The Devil's Carnival. But even with worldwide fame, Tech Nine and Strange Music are still all about Kansas City. The city has shaped Tech Nine into who he is today. This is where I'm most comfortable. Kansas City. When I'm gone for a long time on tour or whatever, when I get back, oh man, it just feels so good, you know, to see the skyline coming from the airport, you know what I mean? Like home, first thing you think, Gates, Jack Stack, Go Chicken Go, you know, say Luffy's. <laughs> you know, I gotta get everything I can't get when I'm out of here. I represent the mower and all the way to K-State, call me Tech Nine, but teachers and students call me A. And in a lot of ways, tech has also shaped Kansas City. I write my life. Life inspires me to write my stories. You know what I mean? And I think that's why we're still relevant here. Because I'm gonna keep writing my life. My life is not gonna stop anytime soon. We bring people together. If we can do it in my show, in the venue, we need to be able to do it in life, out here, outside the venue, because music brings us all together. You know, everybody's laughing, and there's no color boundaries, there's no nothing, you know what I mean? This is just our town, we love it, man. We, we carry Kansas City on our backs around the world. When we get to Dublin next Tuesday, 
that's how we test the waters from backstage. We're like, Dublin, KC Mo. And we hear that roar. We're like, okay, we got him. Let's rock. Artists signed to the strange music label all have one thing in common raw talent and a rare depth of character. Yubi is part of the strange duo Sess Crew and is working on his first solo album. Yeah, that's nice, man. That just sounds like it's mixed, Josh. It is. Oh, man. I love storytelling music. I love music with substance and stuff that's going to change the way you think or make you think. And uh, and that's that's one of the reasons that I like Tech so much is because uh, he, the connectivity and the feeling in his music is, is powerful. We set this standard for the execs. So now they make any other artist that comes along live up to that same standard. Otherwise, you're not going to get here. Sometimes already part of the family. 19-year-old Mackenzie Nicole is the first artist on the new arm of Strange Music, Strange Maine. She is also the daughter of Travis O'Gwin. The whole truth in a sentence of what I'm trying to do and what this project is trying to do is I'm an opera singer trying to do pop music on a rap label that was inspired by a rock band. Mackenzie has known Tech 9 her entire life. Her dad didn't want her joining the family business. God, I didn't want her getting into this, man. I did not want her in this business, but there's no stopping her, by the way. I could say, you know what, I'm out. And there's no nepotism. I made it extremely hard for her every step of the way in hopes that she would go ahead and, you know, you got accepted at Ivy League schools, go do that. You know, we went to Princeton three times. Yeah, I've got to chase her around the world right now. She's, she's um, the opportunities are, are happening and she's really grounded too. She just turned 19, but uh, she's absolutely awesome. As Mackenzie's star rises, That's what we usually do. her dad and tech yes. are in her corner. Right before I went on stage, I remember my dad and tech were like, hey, 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 during that pause when you perform Dark Side, go throw them some CDs. And I was like, throw them CDs? Like, what if they don't like me? <laughs> what if I'm like, hey, who wants a CD? And everyone's like, so I go over and I pick them up and I hold one up and like, Probably 50 people were like, yeah, and I was like, you like me, <laughs> you don't hate me. How you do? Me being around tech all these years how you do? What's made up, me know how to be a celebrity. Bam! One of the biggest things that tech I, that I learned from him was to definitely be yourself. <laughs> you want to take a picture? Because if you're yourself, you don't have to turn it on. Take this picture right here, come on. And he's like, you're good enough. I picked you because you're a star. Damn. You're going to just be you. You don't have to be on here acting, acting extra what people think rappers are. Like, you know what I'm saying? You don't have to talk with a bunch of slang. You're an intelligent dude. Speak like that. Can we sign that? And I stop for everybody. Anybody wants a picture with me, autograph, anytime, I always stop. In restaurants, I mean, I've been in church, and people are like, can I, get a, can I take a picture with you? And I'm like... Okay, real quick. Everybody's praying real quick. This is our home. Kansas City's one of those towns. When I talk to other people, who did I talk to recently? I was like, man, you guys got a lot of like hometown pride there. I'm like, yeah. And then our team's winning and doing better. It even it stacks that up. You know, when the Royals won the World Series, that was like crime stopped in Kansas City. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? How you how does that I have never heard of that. I've never heard of a city that their baseball team is going to the World Series, so crime stops. There's a lot of there's a lot of love, even though there's a lot of stuff that goes on. A lot, you know, crime and uh, you know hard times and stuff. I think there's a lot of hometown pride in Kansas City. We feel it. We take that everywhere with us. The proof is 4,000 people on this dark and stormy night, ready to rock out with Tech 9 in the Power and Light District. Tech Nine! I'm so proud of the sold out show in the rain, baby. Thank you, Kansas City, for giving me so much opportunity since my first job at the age of 14 to the ownership of my business, Strange Music. And I love this place. You've embraced me ever since I first stepped on stage in fourth grade, all the way to 70,000 in attendance here at Rockfest, my biggest crowd to this date. All these people in here, man, 
a lot of love. There's a whole lot of love. You are my comfort zone, my inspiration for many major ideas, and the place where I can find the love from my many wonderful relatives. Thank you for taking care of me and keeping me safe throughout the years. That is a blessing. I will never forget all this love you've shown me over all these years. Kansas City, Missouri. I love you, Kansas City. Love, Aaron D. Yates, AKA Tech Nine. world's most successful independent rapper, an achievement that didn't come easily. So we want to thank Tech 9 for telling his story to KMBC Chronicle, and special thanks to everyone at Strange Music for their help with this project. Chronicle is a series of special in-depth reports that we will bring you throughout the year. KMBC 9's Matt Fleener working on a story about the secrets and truths that are hiding in our DNA, Matt. An incredible story, Laura. 23 pairs of chromosomes make up our DNA, the person we are. But what if some of those chromosomes were question marks? That's the case for one local woman who took a simple test to learn more about her family's history. As those questions are answered, it opened a world she never expected. DNA is a real deal. This year on Chronicle. Look down. A Kansas City makeup artist grants KMBC 9 News full access to her DNA profile. And then you open up this door, Pandora's box. It's both amazing and deeply troubling what she uncovers about her family through a simple DNA test. And then it's like the most icky feeling because that person was something that was a part of who, like what created you. <gasps> I see you. <laughs> this story follows Melissa Blayton as she discovers her adoption story. Hi. Oh my gosh. Oh my God. <laughs> Can you believe it's real? Hi. All the way to an airport meeting with a sister she's never met. So much is happening in like such a short period of time since I have taken that test. I'm super scared about what, what we could potentially uncover because I don't think that um, she and I are the only ones out there. KMBC Chronicle DNA Discoveries airs Thursday, April 18th at 9 o'clock. You see the T and the 9? Yeah. Some of them are missing. Hey, look at this. KC, baby. For an even deeper look at Tech 9, we have several digital extras from The King, The Clown, and The G on KMBC.com. But I don't regret building this. You'll find extended interviews, an exclusive tour of Tech's home, and a comprehensive list of all the music from tonight's episode. All at KMBC.com. KC Moe.